Hey guys, still there. Welcome to the War Room. Now, it's been a while since I did one of these War Room videos, and the reason for that is that I just didn't have that much to talk about. I checked, and the last one was just before Christmas last year, so it's been about three months that the War Room has uh, not been published. Now, Congratulations. the reason that I'm doing it this time around is that um, there are some interesting developments. Some very, very interesting developments. Not of all of them positive, I gotta add. Here's the thing. Um, as I already <laughs> teased, basically, in my recent video of XCOM, I said, if I'm sounding a bit distracted, that's because I am getting sued. I just heard that I'm getting sued. Now, here's the story behind that. I am organizing an open body language workshop, as I call it, which means it's a free workshop. This is coming up Thursday, and it's specifically geared towards lawyers. So what do you do? Well, you just contact a bunch of lawyers. You see if they're interested. So that's exactly what I did. I cold emailed a bunch of lawyers, asking them in a very, very polite manner, under a personal title, so not at all spammy. I just asked them, guys, uh, or actually, uh, dear sir, would you be interested in attending a workshop? Because lawyers are generally not trained in body language, but it is still a very, very important element in how you come across to clients and how you can help your come, uh, how you can help your clients come across better in court, for example, or in negotiations. Now, of course, um, not all of them responded. I hadn't expected that. What happened is that one of these lawyers came back with a reply asking only, how did you get my email address? So I said, well, look, I got it from the website. And I thought that, considering your position, you would be the most uh, appropriate person in your firm to be contacted about this. Now, um, the same day I heard back from the guy, again, via email, and he said, um, your email classifies as unwanted spam, and I intend to take action against you. So I was like, okay, action, like what the hell? His action that he wants to take against me um, would be consisting of a trial. Yes, a trial. Now, this is not one of those big jury trials that you might consider for, let's say, the US. We don't have those over here in the Netherlands. We have a slightly different way of uh, well, handling lawsuits like that. So, um, it was not at all going to be one of those massive court cases, but you end up with a smaller, let's say, 1v1 court case in which he would state that he had suffered damages now, I found this to be very, very peculiar, because what exactly is his damage? I thought, okay, look, you um, got an email that uh, offered a service that you're not interested in. Fine, uh, just hit delete, don't reply, and move on with your day. And I did not send some sort of giant sales letter either. It was a sales letter of maybe half a page, if that much, probably less. Now, the guy continued and said, okay, um, if you want to prevent a lawsuit from happening, then what you can do is transfer a 125 euro to me as a one-off payment or a one-off, um, I don't know, one-off uh, set damages. So he implied that by just me sending this one email, I caused a hundred and twenty-five euros in damages. Now, I know that lawyers are expensive, but they're not that expensive. That is just utterly ridiculous. Now, fortunately, with my clientele for the body language business mostly being lawyers lately, I could just um, basically go through my Rolodex and contact a couple of lawyers right off the bat, a couple of friends that are in that business. So I asked them, hey, look, um, I got this email can you have a look at it? Is it serious? And the both of the people that I sent the email to, that I forwarded the uh, threatening email to, said no. This guy is nuts. Because he has absolutely no case. There is no way that he's going to be able to uh, either pursue this or continue with his threat. 
And this is starting to look a bit more like extortion than anything else. So we thought, okay, um, that's comforting. <laughs> that is very uh, comforting. Now, um, I decided to just ignore the email that the guy sent. I thought, you know what? Um, fine. I'll just ignore Until it because time. that was the recommendation. I could just safely ignore the email and it was not likely that there was going to be any reply or any further response. So I just decided to ignore the email. Now the uh, lawyer that threatened me had said in the email that he would have a deadline for the offer. So I would have to reply inside two days or 48 hours and otherwise he was going to take action against me. That email came in, um, I believe, Monday. So when uh, came end of Wednesday, I thought, well, nothing has happened. Uh, the guy probably decided to let it go. There's probably nothing that he's going to be doing further. Something like that. So I thought, okay, dodge another bullet. Uh, this guy is basically nuts, and I don't have to worry about it. So. To my great surprise, I got an email Saturday saying, um, unfortunately, I have not heard back from you. And this means that my offer to get the uh, one-off punitive damages has now expired. I will now start to take legal action against you. I looked up your information and I will uh, send you a... Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's called. It's not called a subpoena, but um, I will serve you. I think that's the appropriate term. So he's going to send me basically an invitation to go to, to court. Now, um, this is right before I decided to start recording a video. I was just checking my email quickly, and then when you get something like that, <laughs> that is something that is pretty serious. You're like, what? what? I'm getting sued? What? Uh, how much can I expect to pay for this? Uh, where do I get a lawyer? Um, do I even need a lawyer? Is this guy even serious? Or is he just continuing to make threats that he will not go through on? That was before I recorded that XCOM video uh, where I got my spark. Fortunately, that was a uh, mission for XCOM that I didn't really need to focus on heavily because in my mind I was not busy on creating a good video I was busy on basically trying to figure out strategies on how to deal with this thing and um, through that um, I also after recording the video immediately contacted a couple of the lawyer friends that I contacted previously I said hey um, I think this guy's serious actually before we go on let me change the sound of it because this might be a bit loud there just doing a bit of grinding of Star Trek online in the background nothing too serious now um, I just ignored the email initially um, then came the email Saturday saying hey uh, I'm still serious and um, I'm going to serve you so I contacted a couple of lawyer friends some of who um, surprisingly even replied in the weekend I mean, these are just uh, business contacts of mine. But uh, my contact with them is thus good, or so good, that I can call upon them in the weekend. So um, having a lawyer clientele in this situation really tends to help. So I was very happy that most of them replied. And one of them replied and saying, look, this is conduct which is, um, well, I'd say the military term is conduct unbecoming an officer, but conduct unbecoming a lawyer because this guy has absolutely no legal ground to cover something like this his damages are very very debatable if any and um, what he's doing is hurting people's confidence in lawyers as a whole so he's not just um, trying to get something from you which and all likeliness he's not likely to get but he's not l very likely to um, get any sort of damages anyway so uh, what you can do is just say okay look um, I'm going to transfer or I'm going to hand over this case 
to my uh, legal attorney and I'm going to be filing a complaint with the Bar Association. The Bar Association, in case you're not familiar with uh, legalese, you have a uh, organization where all the lawyers are registered and these guys still work via well, basically the same process or the same system as doctors do where if you think that a doctor did something that is absolutely unbecoming or uh, which let's say who made a mistake in surgery something like that then you can contact an association like that and say hey this guy is up to no good and uh, can you do something about him now in the worst case and i don't think that this is going to happen and this is not what i'm after the guy is going to get disbarred which means he can no longer practice law now that is not what i'm after but um, I was very happy that I can, in fact, take some sort of action against this guy. I'm still waiting to hear back from a couple of other of my lawyer friends, but uh, this is the situation as it is currently. So I spend Saturday drafting a complaint or um, drafting a letter of complaint to be sent to the bar. And then um, once I hear back from the other lawyers, I'm going to be discussing or I'm going to be probably sending that in because I've heard back from two out of the four contacts that I sent the emails to so far. And two out of two said, well, this is something that you can go to the bar with because this is so serious and so um, unfair, so much misuse of power in the sense that it's uh, one law firm or one lawyer inside a law firm. I'm not even sure if the partners from the law firm know what's going on. It's one guy um, who's basically misusing his title of lawyer to go after um, a small business like yours. This is so wrong that you definitely have a case there. And if you do file a complaint with the bar, then there's a very good chance that the guy is going to be on your doorstep in no time with flowers and champagne to please, please, please withdraw the complaint. That's how serious those things can get. So, um, for this week, I hope to be able to get a response from these uh, lawyer friends of mine so that I know exactly what to do and that I can put the whole issue to bed. Um, it's not likely to happen. I'm still likely to have to go to court, which is ridiculous, come to think of it, because still there is absolutely... Uh, very, very little in the sense of damages, but this guy decided to apparently go through with it, which means he's going to be spending valuable time of his own, and potentially his firm's, to uh, draft a uh, court case against me in this regard. For the damages of, oh, I don't know, 12 euros. Something like that. Uh, that's my, <laughs> my short conclusion of it. Which is just nuts. So, um, I have no idea how it's going to continue, but this is my estimation of it. Going to court, um, defending myself, <laughs> explaining the situation to a judge, and then probably have the lawyer get laughed out of court as he is not going to be accepted, or as his case is going to get thrown out. I think that that is going to happen. But I gotta say, it is keeping me busy. It is definitely something that uh, I had never planned for or prepared for. I was not trying to spam these lawyers. I was not trying to borrow them of their time. It's just I was trying to get these guys a genuine offer for some uh, free workshop that they could attend and even ask them if you want to bring any of your other guys from the firm, then by all means do so. By all means do so. But apparently... This guy thought that, that was spam, and um, either he's some sort of sick, or he has a hobby of trying to, uh, I don't know, engage small businesses like mine, and try to basically, at uh, legal gunpoint, try to get some sort of, I don't know, retribution, some sort of damages, something like that. Still, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, um, in gaming news, as you may have seen, Wargaming, or correction, Wargame Red Dragon has returned. It is something that I'm going to be doing every now and then. Um, 
it is there so I can still have some fun with it and this means that I'll not be doing ranked because I've found ranked to be uh, rather stressful and not at all that much fun. So instead I'm going to be doing game modes that I do enjoy. And some of you have already asked me, can I have a game with you? Um, there are no set times that I'm on. There are no set times that I'm playing Red Dragon. It's just when I feel like playing, that's when I'll play. And this means that it is pretty hard to catch me online. It is not easy to uh, find me online at the same time you are likely to be. This is no um, way for me to avoid you. That's not the goal here. But I have uh, a bit more on my plate, as you can imagine, especially with the whole lawsuit coming up. And there is um, the issue that I don't have set times that I'm on because my daily schedule changes quite a bit. What I will try to do is uh, one of these weeks have a, uh, let's say, a plan or... Um, a date that I'm going to be saying, okay, this evening or this night I'm going to be on. And this is a time when you can expect to catch me online and we can have some, I don't know, 10v10s together. We can get on the TS. Um, I might stream it, I'm not sure. Stream just puts additional strain on my system. I might just record it and turn it into separate videos after. But stuff like that is perfectly capable of happening. So uh, keep an eye on the channel. Other news gaming news wise we have steel division coming up now um, about the giveaway that I did actually let me go f back one step steel division is a game that is being created by Eugen which is of course the developer for Wargame Red Dragon and Paradox Entertainment who you might know from Hearts of Iron these guys are working together and they're creating a what seems to be war game situation in 1944 Hence the title, uh, Steel Division Normandy 44. And what you need to do there is uh, pick one of the... I'm not exactly sure how many divisions there are going to be. But it's going to be something along the lines of one out of... Uh, I think 10 or 12, something like that, divisions right now. So basically, in wargame terms, nations. That you can pick from, build your own deck and then take that deck out to battle in uh, the standard wargame fashion 2v2, 4v4, uh, 1v1s of course, 10v10, etc. When the game is going to be out, I don't know. What I do know is that uh, last week I got a couple of keys. This was uh, an email from Eugen saying, hey, here's 50 keys. Now I didn't actually get these keys as a list of serial keys that you could activate on Steam. But I got them in the sense that you could fill out a form, including an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement. And that means that you are not allowed to make or talk about make videos about the game, talk about the game until the NDA is lifted. So um, despite the fact that I should be getting a key Wednesday, so that's Wednesday 15th of March, and getting access to the closed beta then, and believe until the 19th of March, so just only four days. Despite the fact that I will be getting access, I cannot make videos about it. Or I can record videos, but I cannot publish them. So, much as I would like to share what is going on there, I just can't. Because I'm under an NDA. Now, about my uh, picked method of distribution, which was sending or putting up a video and saying, hey, in four hours I'm going to be posting another video with a link to uh, the actual form where you can register. Um, some of you complained about the way that I did that. Uh, maybe I could have done it with a bit more time in between, a bit more spacing. Because I put up one video saying, hey, there's going to be a video. And then I put up the next one in four hours after. I was just eager to get you guys the codes or to get you guys into the closed beta program. Of course, with a YouTube channel, and mine has followers from basically around the world you're always going to fuck over someone. You're either going to be pissing off, uh, let's say, the US, which might be either asleep or working, if I post it early in my time zone. Because as I'm recording this video, it's 10.30 a.m. for me, but that means it's 4.30 in the morning for New York time zone. 
So if I would post a video with game codes now, then the US or all the subscribers from the US, that might include you, would get pretty upset about that. Because, hey, hey, this isn't fair, we never got the chance. Yeah, um, if I post it, uh, let's say, on uh, a late time or an average time for me, so that's say midday, the problem is going to be that I get complaints from uh, Asia, Australia and all the uh, time zones that are further ahead of me. Because then they feel left out because, hey, I was in bed when this happened. So there was no, <laughs> there was no right way to do it. I was going to fucked over whichever way. And this means that um, all the keys were gone. I believe in the first two minutes, I think somewhere as quickly as that. And unfortunately, if you didn't get the key, um, you didn't get the key. There's just not that much that I can do about that. What I don't know is whether this beta key is also going to give you access to the game in full. Um, it might. I'm not exactly sure what their plan is there. I'm not exactly sure if they intend to give you the game like that. Or if they're planning on just getting a couple of guys, let's say uh, quite a few hundred by now, because not only my channel was invited, but quite a few others as well. But they're just trying to get a um, good population in the closed beta test, so they can get some results, get some testing done. Stuff like that's perfectly happen, perfectly reasonable, perfectly likely. And then if you get the full game, I don't know, they haven't told me, so we'll just have to wait and see. And again, unfortunately, I will not be able to share anything until they lift the NDA, because I'm already getting sued once, and I'm not looking forward to getting sued again. So I hope you understand that. And please take the NDA very, very seriously. Don't go posting your results in a private video, in a forums. You're not allowed to talk about this thing. Non-disclosure agreement says you're not allowed to disclose it. And if you do break it, it's... Well, I think it's not very likely that they're going to come after you. But they might. And do you really want to take that chance? Do you really want to tempt Paradox or Eugen to come after you? I mean, it's not likely, but... Um, I wouldn't take the risk. I'm getting sued already and it's not fun. Anyway, um, last topic I wanted to discuss. I picked up self-defense. Now, uh, many, many years ago I uh, already took up judo and I did that from I think age... Oof, um, age 6 maybe? Age 8? Something like that? all the way until age 13, 14, something like that. And uh, then I went to high school and I just uh, decided that it was no longer for me. I wasn't having fun anymore, so I quit. Now, starting of this year, I picked up Krav Maga, which, um, in case you're not familiar with it, is a self-defense sport, which is uh, very practically based in the sense that it uses your standard responses, or your, at least your uh, standard reactions, what you might do in a situation where you're attacked. And it is purely, purely practical. There are no points for style here. It is just getting through an encounter where someone is hell-bent on uh, either, let's say, hurting you, robbing you, taking your life, stuff like that. It is a lot of fun, but I am getting my ass kicked. I can get, I can tell you that much. Um, of course, that bit is not fun, but so long as I manage to keep a positive mindset about it and understand that this is a learning process, I can get away with it. I can, uh, <laughs> I can tolerate it. But man, I'm getting home um, Fridays usually when the training was, and um, I'm getting a, quite a few bruises. Uh, bruises, blue spots on my arms, um, and I believe that they call this Krav makeup for um, being pretty much standard issue injuries in that sense. But it is fun, and I am learning. Um, how valuable it is going to be in the real world, I don't know. I hope to never have to use it, 
but you never know. Stuff I did find interesting when I was um, considering going or when I was going in for my first class is the whole psychological aspect of it. And not so much the sense of uh, how does psychology of conflict happen, but um, the psychology of uh, learning in this regard. The psychology of how do you pick up a new skill? How does that work? I am not going to survive this encounter, am I? How do you pick up a new skill? What happens? What can you expect? What is likely to happen? Stuff like that um, is very interesting. And what I did is write a blog post about that. It's on my LinkedIn, so I'm going to be linking to that. And if you would like to connect on LinkedIn, then by all means do so. Uh, just consider that I post most of my stuff in Dutch, so you might not be able to understand it. But the way that I was looking at the first training is I thought, hey, um, no matter what happens during that first training, I'm going to come out on top anyway. I'm going to come out ahead because I don't know anything yet. So it can only get better in that regard. I can only come out or come back home having learned some new stuff. And I can learn from anyone. I can learn from absolutely anyone <clears throat> because I don't know anything yet. So everyone that I meet is going to be further in this Krav Maga experience than I am. <clears throat> that makes them valuable partners or valuable people to talk to. Because absolutely everyone is going to be able to teach me something. And that's the way that I meant, uh, went in. That's the mindset I had. And um, of course I got my ass handed to me. I was fully prepared for that to happen. Uh, of course it still isn't fun. But it is an interesting bit of psychology where you think, okay, I know what's going to happen, or I know what I can expect. Everyone knows more than I do. And um, I'm just going to have fun and pick up as much stuff as possible. That's the way that I was going into this thing. And that's the way that um, I came home. And of course, came home bruised, battered, but with uh, new experience, some valuable lessons. Especially keep your defenses up. That is definitely something I need to be working on. Um, and I am slowly but steadily getting better. Uh, I am definitely not capable of applying this stuff in real life yet. But I'm getting there. I'm doing the best I can. So if you are considering picking up um, not just a new sport, but basically a new anything, whether it's uh, a sport or a language that you wanted to learn for a while, expect that you can only get better. There's no getting worse when learning a language. I don't believe that. So you can only get better and it will suck in the beginning. But once you're prepared for that, and once you think, hey, okay, after this session, am I going to be further ahead than I was when I came here, or am I going to be worse off? If the answer is I'm going to be worse off, then you're doing it wrong. The answer is always going to be, I'm coming out ahead. So whatever you're considering learning, just go for it. Have fun. Try it. Um, if it's not for you, then fine. Disengage from it. But do give it a shot and you might be pleasantly surprised. Now with that, that's the end of the War Room. I hope you enjoyed this, um, especially the whole thing about the uh, lawyer thing, the, the trial. It's mostly something I wanted to get out from my chest and I thought I might as well inform you guys of what's going on and um, if for some reason there is not a video up on the channel, that might be it. The fact that I'm just distracted with the whole lawsuit thing. I don't know when the whole trial is going to be. I don't expect it to be anytime soon. We'll just have to wait and see. And uh, with that, I hope you have a very, very good week. Make it a good one, because no one else is going to do that for you. And let me know what your thoughts are on the Krav Maga thing, on Steel Division, and on the lawsuits. If you have any experiences there, then that's going to be most valuable to learn from even if it is from a different country. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good week, and I'll see you soon for more videos from Wargame, XCOM, and hopefully soon, Steel Division. See you soon.